KWT slaying. Salama family, Salama, how y'all doing today? Hope you're blessed and highly favored. When you were young and you got mad at your mom and dad or you got punished, you said, some of y'all did. Tell me, give me a one if this happened to you or something similar. You say, I'm running away from home. You're, you're so mad, you know. I'm running away from home. And, and and you go outside and you go to the backyard. I did. I ran away from home. I went to the backyard. I th I thought I was getting far away. But I wasn't leaving home. But in my mind, I was running away. I went to the backyard. And see... <laughs> Some people, some people ain't got no common sense. As one of my brothers said, common ain't common. Common ain't common. You know, we all had questions and had issues with some of the biblical exegesis. And they be like, these aren't the joys you're looking for. They come up with some foolish response. But, you know, we have an excuse. Our excuse is that blindness in part that come to Israel to the fullness of the Gentiles come in. So we had an excuse. There was partial blindness, the scripture tells us. But for some of them, they don't have no excuse, in my opinion. But this is what this is what they want us to believe. All right. The Exodus route. This is what they want us to believe right here. All right. So we got persecuted, enslaved, beaten, killed, drowned. Then when we leave, we say, you know what? Our God didn't judge y'all. Put a bunch of plagues on y'all. And we heading out the door. So we're going to go across the Red Sea. Do, 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 do. Let's cross the Red Sea. Do, 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 do. We cross the Red Sea. Pharaoh and his army chasing us. And a whole bunch of his people died in that water, right? Do, 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 Let's cross the Red Sea. Let's cross the Red Sea. Let's cross the Red Sea. Da, 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 da. Come on, critical thinking. So we cross the Red Sea. Just to end up where? In the backyard. Come on, huh? We cross the Red Sea. Pharaoh them drowned, chasing us. What? to end up in the backyard. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. It don't make no sense. 
Oh, they went into the wilderness. Do, 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 do. They didn't know where they're going. Do, 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 do. So they end up over here in what they call Arabia. Not too far from Egypt. Now remember, Israel wasn't always Israel as captives, right? They weren't Israelites in captive. Because remember, Jacob came with his sons and the rest of the family and they lived in Goshen and they were like top of the food chain. So they weren't prisoners initially. They knew all of this area. You know, they traveled in Egypt. They traveled to Arabia and, and lo and behold, the promised land was right in the backyard. God led us into the wilderness for 40 years. And we crossed the Red Sea to end up where? In the backyard of Egypt? Really? Y'all saw the image that I used for this, right? Literally, that's the border of modern day Israel and modern day Egypt right next door across the highway, literally. You can see from this map how far away Jerusalem is from Egypt. That's Canaan land, but we didn't know where we were going. We were lost in the, in the wilderness for 40 years. God led us in the wilderness for 40 years just so we can be next door neighbors to the Egyptians. And the Egyptians ain't had no problem with that, mind you. Now, they didn't lose Pharaoh's army and all that stuff because they were chasing the Israelites and they got drowned in the supposed Red Sea. They lost a lot of money and them Jews took all of their gold and their silver and their wealth and their animals just to move to the backyard. Something wrong with y'all if you believe this is the true land. I'm telling you, it don't make no sense, but you know, some people are gonna believe what they want. You can see the name Sukkot preserved. We have jumped to the exit roads out of Egypt and have located the only two possible routes out of the country. The northern route, the road that the biblical text clearly states was not taken by the Hebrews, and the second route, which went through central Sinai. The road that the Bible clearly states was taken by the Hebrews. And they went out into the wilderness of Shur. It is here that Hofmeyer deals himself the death blow when he turns biblical history on its head and contradicts the biblical account completely by suggesting that the Hebrews actually took the northern route out of Egypt. The same route that Hofmeyer himself and the biblical text clearly stated was not taken by the Hebrews. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines. When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the land of the Philistines, although it was near, for God said, lest the people turn back. So initially, they didn't want to go out the one way because he's afraid they would turn back. Now they're going out a different way, and God says, turn back. But basically, we see them turning back up to the area they originally were trying to avoid. As an archaeologist, looking at it from a geographical standpoint, it doesn't make a lot of good sense. But boy, does it make good sermons. Geographically, this makes no sense. Strategically, it makes no sense. So I hand it to the pastors and say, boy, is this good sermon material. <laughs> now, it don't make sense for him, and it don't make sense for me either. It don't make sense for him, but it don't make sense for, for me either, because, see, some of y'all going to believe anything, but literally this is the case. 
Israel is on one side of the road. Egypt is on the other. But it ain't make no, no, no sense. It don't make no sense. But y'all going to eat it up anyway, right? This is literally, literally the case. We didn't ran away from the Egyptians. We ran far away. Where do we end up in the backyard? Because sometimes God sends you in directions that make absolutely no sense. The era is 13th century BC Egypt. In the years preceding the death of Ramses II in 1213 BC, an event which the biblical account ties directly to the date of the Exodus. Pharaoh's chariots and his host hath he cast into the sea. His chosen captains also are drowned in the Red Sea. From P. Ramses in northeastern Egypt, the Hebrews will first migrate west before turning south towards the southern borders of ancient Egypt. On their migration towards the south, they will pass by an unknown region, which they call Sukkoth. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Succoth. The next station on the Exodus was Etham, a city that is said to have been located on the very edge of the desert, the southern desert of Egypt. Once the Hebrews reached this region, they did not continue straight south into the desert through northwestern Sudan, a region that was known as the land of the Philistines and was named after an ancient Egyptian tribe that lived on southwestern Egypt and northwestern Sudan. We will cover the Philistines in future episodes. The reason for not taking this route, even though it supposedly was the closer route, is explained in the text. When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the land of the Philistines, although it was near, for God said, lest the people turn back when they see war and return to Egypt. The reason was that there was fear that some of the Hebrews would surrender after seeing war and return back to Egypt by turning north again. There's a fear if they go on this road of the land of the Philistines, something's lurking out there that'll scare the bejeebers out of them. They're going to make a U-turn and come back. They made a peculiar turn to where they had originally come from. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before Pihahiroth. It's a very important word in Hebrew, shuv. This is the word the prophets use for repent. You're heading down a certain path. You're supposed to shove. You're supposed to turn and come back the opposite direction. That's the word. Why would the Hebrews return north when they were being persecuted by the Egyptians who were besieging them from the north? Why turn back north? Why not just cross the Nile from the southern borders of Egypt? The reason for the Hebrews' peculiar choice to go back north to the same place that they had originally escaped from was not religious or symbolic, as claimed by Hofmeier. Because sometimes God sends you in directions that make absolutely no sense. But simply historical and geographical. It was to return to the only geographical point in all of Egypt that allowed the hundreds of thousands of escaped Hebrews to make a safe crossing over to the eastern side of the Nile. To the lowest point of the Nile, the Nile cataract in the city of Aswan. The driest point of the Nile, and therefore also the safest place for the Hebrews to cross the river. So the case he makes and the case I've made is that the Yamsuf, which is, which is the Sea of Reeds, isn't the Red Sea as you know it today. It is the Nile River. Now, some of you all gonna believe what you want. I don't care, right? But you know, pray for some common sense. Now, 
let's look at let's look at the book of jubilees right quick because there's something that we don't pay attention to which is really interesting at least in my opinion and you know just to make a case but let's 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 go there all right so it says and in the sixth year of the third week of the 40 49th jubilee thou didst depart and dwell in the land of midian five weeks in one year and thou didst return into egypt in the second week in the second year in the 50th jubilee and thou thyself knowest what he spake unto thee on mount sinai and what prince Mastema, now that's that's like Satan, right? Desired to do with thee when thou was returning into Egypt on the way when thou didst meet him at the lodging place. Did he not with all his power seek to slay thee and deliver the Egyptians out of thy hand when he saw that thou was sent to execute judgment and vengeance on the Egyptians? And I delivered thee out of the out of his hand, and thou didst perform the signs and wonders which thou was sent to perform in Egypt against Pharaoh and against all his house and against his servants and his people. And the Lord executed a great vengeance on them for Israel's sake and smote them through the plagues of blood and frogs, lice and dog flies and malignant balls, breaking forth in blains and their cattle by death and by hailstone. Thereby he destroyed everything that grew for them and by locusts, which devoured the residue which had been left by the hell, and by darkness, and by the death of the firstborn of men and animals, and on all their idols, the Lord took vengeance and burned them with fire, and everything was sent through thy hand. Now, I'm going to continue this, but all of this, all of these plagues, all of these judgments happened on the Egyptians just so the Israelites can what? go and move to the backyard or shall we say move across the street all right that's what you want me to believe i'm sorry all right but some of y'all gonna believe that i don't care that's your business all right so let's continue that thou shouldest declare these things before they were done and thou didst speak with the king of egypt before all his servants and before his people and everything took place according to thy words. Ten great and terrible judgments came on the land of Egypt, that thou mightest execute vengeance on it for Israel. And the Lord did everything for Israel's sake, and according to his covenant, which he had ordained with Abraham, that he would take vengeance on them as they had brought them by force into bondage. And the prince of the Mestimai, can we say Satan? stood up against thee and sought to cast thee into the hands of Pharaoh. And he helped the Egyptian sorcerers, and they stood up and wrought before thee the evils. Indeed, we permitted them to work. But the remedies we did not allow to be wrought by their hands. And the Lord smote them with malignant ulcers, and they were not able to stand, for we destroyed them so that they could not perform a single sign. And notwithstanding all these signs and wonders, the prince of Mestimai, can we say Satan, was not put to shame because he took courage and cried to the Egyptians to pursue after thee with all the powers of the Egyptians. So that they pursued them, right? Just so they could move to the, across the street. All right. With their chariots and with their horses and with all the hosts of the people of Egypt. And I stood between the Egyptians and Israel. And we delivered Israel out of his hand and out of the hand of his people. And the Lord brought thee through the midst of the sea as if it were dry land. Now, 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 remember, we've talked about this before. Erase from your mind any idea of the Red Sea that you know today. Add to your thought processes that the Israelites crossed the Nile River. Now, some of this stuff makes sense once you understand that it was the Nile River that they crossed and not the Red Sea. Go back for all of you people who don't watch the old videos. Go watch the old videos and see that it is the Yom Suf, the Sea of Reeds, right? And do your research and see that reeds don't grow in salt water. They grow in fresh water, which thereby means it was the Nile River. So let's go back to where we were. So it says, 
And the Lord brought them through the midst of the sea, let's say the Nile River, as if it were dry land. And all the people whom he brought to pursue after Israel, the Lord our God cast them into the midst of the Nile River. Now, this is going to make sense when I'm saying Nile River, because you can easily overlook this. Into the depths of the abyss beneath the children of Israel. Even as the people of Egypt had cast their children into the river, context wise, context wise, the Egyptians drowned in the sea, aka the Nile River, just like the Egyptians cast the Israelite children where in the Nile River. He took vengeance on a million of them and 1,000 strong and energetic men were destroyed on account of one suckling of the children of thy people, which they had thrown into what? The Nile River. So the Egyptians drowned in the same Nile River as the Israelites' children were being drowned in the Nile River. And on the four, and remember, y'all got to understand how these people translate and transliterate things, all right? I don't want to get into the foolishness of, well, Jacoba mis misrepresenting stuff because it, it specifically says the sea. So we know it was the Red Sea and not the Nile River, but yet they don't go back and look and see that the original translation or transliteration of the word was Yamsuf, which means the sea of reeds. I'm just saying, I know I'm ahead. And on the 14th day and on the 15th and on the 16th and on the 17th and on the 18th, the prince of the Mestima was bound and imprisoned behind the children of Israel. Now, you remember that them angels that got bound, he did. Here's another one that got bound, that he might not accuse them. And on the 19th, we let them loose that they might help the Egyptians and pursue the children of Israel. And he hardened their hearts and made them stubborn. And the device was devised by the Lord our God, that he might smite the Egyptians and cast them into the sea. Nope, the Nile River, the Yamso. We've been through this again. I don't want to go over it again. And on the 14th, we bound him that he might not accuse the children of Israel on the day when they asked the Egyptians for vessels and garments, vessels of silver, vessels of gold, vessels of bronze, in order to despoil the Egyptians in return for the bondage in which they had forced them to serve. And we did not leave forth the children of Israel from Egypt empty handed. So think of the scenario. Think of this scenario, family. We've been enslaved in America for 400 years. And God says, I'm going to free you from the Americans. And lo and behold, we're on our way. And we cross over into Mexico. Whatever the name of that river over there. What's the name of that river over in Mexico, family? Y'all know. What's that river? Y'all know more than me. So we cross over into Mexico. Do, 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 do. And we land in Mexico, the promised land. But remember, we went into the wilderness for a little bit for 40 years over there, like, let, let's say, uh, southwest. Yeah, the Rio Grande. Thank you. We cross over the Rio Grande and we end up in the promised land across the street from America. Across the street from America. Let me ask you a question, family. Is that deliverance for you? So they then took these people's silver, took their gold, took their bronze, got plagued the heck out of them just for them, them Negroes to move across the street. Well, you know, Pharaoh, uh, you know, I, I know, I know that them, them Israelites, they didn't cross the, the Red Sea and, you know, they, they went over there in Arabia and, uh, you know, uh, Pharaoh, they, you know where they at, Pharaoh? They right across the street now. Pharaoh, they, they, they right, no, really, really. Well, you told me that that our men died chasing them in the Red Sea, but guess what? 
They're right across the street, Pharaoh. Let's go get our money back. Let's go get our gold back. Let's go get our silver. And definitely let's get our slaves back and kill a few of these folks because they're right across the street, Pharaoh. We left America and we in Mexico. Ooh, by little American people, all the ones who persecuted and killed us. Guess where we're at now? We're safe. We're on the other side of the Rio Grande now, Americans. Ha ha ha. Try to get us now. <laughs> Let's go get them Negroes. They're right across the street. Literally. Come on. Common sense. Exodus 39, 27 and 29. When I have brought them back from the nations and have gathered them from the countries of their enemies, I will be proved holy through them in the sight of many nations. Then they will know that I am Yahuwah, their Elohim, for though I sent them into exile among the nations, I will gather them to their own land. Not leaving any behind, I will no longer hide my face from them, for I will pour out my spirit on the people of Israel, declares Yahuwah. So the Most High says he's going to bring us back to the land, right? We in agreement with that? Are we in agreement with that, boys and girls? I would think so. So the Most High says he's going to bring us back to the land. Isaiah 49, 17. Your children hasten back. What? They're going back to the land. And those who let you waste depart from you. Wait, no, they're not departing from us because they're right across the street. Your children hasten back, what? Back to the land, and those who lay you ways depart from you. No, they're not. They're right across the street, Lord. Literally. Exodus 14, 13. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will be you will see the deliverance of Yahuwah will bring you today. The deliverance of Yahuwah will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. No, Lord, they're right across the street. They're right there, look, literally. No, 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 Lord, look, seriously, seriously. Look, they're right across the street, Lord. For real, look. We went, we went and spent 40 years in the wilderness over there in Arabia because we didn't know where the heck we were. Even though we lived in Egypt for, for 215 years, We've been in that whole area because we didn't start off as slaves. We traveled the whole area. We, li we went in Arabia. We even set up areas where we lived. And, you know, we ain't never saw Jerusalem before because that's the promised land. We didn't know where the promised land were, even though it was right across the street. We didn't know where the promised land was, Lord. We stayed in the wilderness in Arabia for 40 years just to end up where? Right across the street. Come on. Some, something wrong with y'all if y'all still believe that's the land. I'm telling you. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. Well, you know, you're cold, but that just means that, you know, the ones who was chasing them, you know, they drowned in the Red Sea. And so when they died, they never saw those Egyptians again. The, the Bible didn't really mean that they wouldn't see the Egyptians again, because obviously we're right across the street. Isaiah 49, 21, then you will say in your heart, who bore me these? I was bereaved and barren. I was exiled and rejected. Who brought these up? I was left all alone. But these, where have they come from? No, when, when you go back, y'all, y'all going to just be right across the street from Egypt. Don't worry about it. And, and all them people who've been living there that whole time, you know, don't worry about it. The land ain't missed you. 
Because some of y'all been there the whole time. I know we spent 40 years in the wilderness, but guess what? We end up right across the street. We, 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 we right across the street. Jacoba ran to the backyard. You know, he said he was running away, but he, you know, he didn't really run away. You know, Jacoba just went to the backyard. Now, there's this dilemma. There's a dilemma. What's the dilemma, Jacoba? There's a dilemma based upon where people say our land is, where people say our land isn't. And well, Jacoba, you know the Bible says that our land is is is, is uh, you know. Um, Right there by uh, Euphrates, you know, on uh, the borders between the Euphrates and the Tigris. You, you, you know, Yakob, but I, th that's what they, you know, you wrong. You wrong, Yakob, because, because you know, the Bible specifically says that our, uh, the area that, that God gave to Abraham is, is, is from the Tigris to the Euphrates. I hear that one. I hear that one. Have you heard that one? Give me a one if you've heard that one, that the land that God gave us is from the Tigris to the Euphrates, or Euphrates to the Tigris. If you didn't, give me a two. I'm going to tell you, I can't believe I ever thought the Middle East was our land. I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm, like, I'm just surprised. Yep, see, a lot of people heard it. I've heard it, too. Is that true? No, it's not true. The Bible don't say that, but they didn't made it up. It became common, just like the rapture. You know, some of y'all still believe in the rapture. But let's talk about this. Why? Why? Because I'm going to make a point. I'm going to make a point. I'm going to make a point that they're lying to you. They've been lying to you. And common sense will get you out of the hole of the lie. Common sense, some of y'all don't have. Common ain't always common. Common sense will get you out of the hole. The Tigris-Euphrates River system, great river system of northwestern Asia, it comprises the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, which follow roughly the parallel courses through the heart of the Middle East, the lower portion of the region that they define known as Mesopotamia, was one of the cradles of civilization. Now, let's look at this map. That's what I want to look at. Do y'all see this? See right here? That's the Euphrates. See that right there? Euphrates. Can we say Euphrates, boys and girls? Can you see right here the Tigris family? Right? Now, some people, now I'm 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 not I'm not saying they're correct, but some people say the land that was given us is between the Euphrates and the Tigris. Now, that's an obvious lie, right, based upon this map, right? Because right here toward the left, on the left to Syria is where, quote, unquote, Israel is, correct? Once again, a map of the Euphrates and Tigris, Syria right here. So, you know, on the left is where Israel, supposed to Israel is, right? Now, what does the word say is in concerning the true boundary because i wanted to set this straight because some people believe the euphrates and the tigris is the you know the demarcation and there's another demarcation genesis 15 18 on that day yahuwah made a covenant with abram and said to your descendants i give this land from the wadi of egypt to the great river euphrates now what's the wadi of egypt family shall we say the now so the true demarcation is from the river now to the Wadi of Egypt. From the now to Euphrates. Right? That's what it says. So 
Let's look at that right quick. So this would be the true demarcation, right? From the Nile to the River Euphrates, right? So that would include, because this is the demarcation, right? It would include all of this over in Africa, which which is why they changed the demarcation, some of them, from the Euphrates to the, to the Tigris, because the Nile puts you in Africa. So the Jews, the Hebrews, the Israelites would be from the Wadi of Egypt, which is the Nile, to the supposed Great River Euphrates, right? That would include all of this, Arabia, Jordan, parts of Lebanon and Syria. This is this is the other half. So you got the lie of the Euphrates to the Tigris, and then you got the lie from the Nile to the Euphrates here. Why, why do you say it's a lie, Jacob? Why do you say it's a lie? Well, Iraq has always been a rag, right? That was never our land. I'm just saying. But that ain't my argue, argument. That's not my argument, mind you. My argument is a little different. Because Israel is still in the back door right there across the street from Egypt. But I'm supposed to believe that's our land. But hey. But there was another Euphrates, right? There's, there was another river called Euphrates. Now, the question is, which one is the real Euphrates? Because we know that the Red Sea was not the Red Sea. It was what? The Yamsuf. It was the Sea of Reeds. But what's this other area, Jacoba, that used to be called Euphrates? Well, let's look at it. The homie, a section of the slave coast. Where's the homie, y'all? West Africa. Can we say West Africa, boys and girls? Between Little Popo and Porto Novo. So we know the area we're talking about is West Africa, the homie. It is now a Portuguese protectorate, though the king is still absolute monarch. The chief city, Weida, we, you know, we talked about Weida, Judah, 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 right? That's the whole, all it is. The, the chief city, Weida, Glenway, Fida, Havida, Uda, was formerly called Judah, and its inhabitants were said to be Jews. So we got Jews in this area. Now, why is Jews in this area? Because it's part of the land that was given to them and their ancestors. How do you know that, Yacoba? While the river Alala, Ephra, what? There's a river in the homie called Alala, which was called Ephra, was spoken of as the Euphrates. Now, there's other documents that say that the Alala River was known by scientists as the Euphrates. So, so according to this and some other documentation, Alala River, which is located in Dahomey, which is in West Africa, was called Euphrates. Now, if we go back to the promised land, on that day, Yahuwah made a covenant with Abram and said to your descendants, I give this land from the Wadi of Egypt, which is the Nile River, to the great river Euphrates. Now, now that we see that one of the places called Euphrates was in Dahomey. From the Nile River to the Great River Euphrates. Can we say West Africa all the way to East Africa? Come on now. I'm just saying. You know what's inclusive in that area? Can we say Ethiopia? So there were Jews. There were Jews in the homey. They were called Judah. And lo and behold, you know what else? There were Jews who lived in Ethiopia, what we call Ethiopia today, which used to be called Abyssinia. There were Jews there too. Why? Because they were living in the home that was allocated to them by Yah. I'm just saying. I've shown on one of the older maps where the Euphrates was on the map where in Africa, 
Y'all remember that video, boys and girls? When I showed the, the map that showed Euphrates in Africa, I'm just saying, which one are you going to choose? The, the post-colonial one that's over there away from Negroes? See, they have to move everything from Africa. Everything is in Africa. Remember the map I showed you by God be that shows all of the black Jews all over the continent of Africa? Can we say the land of Israel, sub-Saharan Africa? I'm just saying everything I presented, everything I've shown lines up, makes sense, line upon line, precept upon precept, but Jacoba don't know what he's talking about. So Dahomey, a pre-colonial West African kingdom, is located in what is now southern Benin. Dahomey reached the height of its power and prestige during the heyday of the Atlantic slave trade. Now, why does that all line up? The land that God gave us, right? Gave us from West Africa all the way to East Africa. And guess what? It just so happens that's the territory where they took some black Jews as slaves. I'm just saying it all lines up. The Jews were in their land, living in their land, given to them and their ancestors, following the traditions and cultures of the African Israelites. But the Middle East are home. Let alone the Middle East don't have no mountains, but I digress. Where is the Niger River? Because the Niger River is the Lala River, which is Ephra, which is the Euphrates in West Africa. Now, where does this river run? Discover the Niger River in Africa and map its course. All right, so let's go down. The Niger River flows from southeastern Guinea through Mali. What? Through Mali? Through Niger? Through Benin, which is where the homie is. And Nigeria, what is the definition of the Niger River? It is the third longest river in Africa behind the Nile and the Congo. The impressive river also creates the Niger Valley, an area of arable, fertile land surrounded by otherwise infertile desert. The river is an invaluable source of water, fish, and hydroelectricity, which has resulted in the establishment of many cities along its banks, these cities were built as trading hubs along the Trans-Saharan caravan trade route. Can we say the land of Israel? Connecting West Africa to larger parts of the world. Now, y'all want me to believe that the Middle East is our home, but guess what? The Niger River, a.k.a. Ephra, a.k.a. the Euphrates, is an invaluable source of what? Water. But you living in the desert in the Middle East. And they got fish and they got hydroelectricity which resulted in establishment of many cities so they could build cities along these rivers and sustain the civilization but you want me to believe that the land they don't have much rivers at all guess what that's our land and they don't have much fish and they gotta they gotta bring these desalinization uh machines in order to get some drinkable water over there in the land you call israel which happens to be in the backyard of egypt that Moses told them, these Egyptians you see, you ain't going to never see again. But you right next door. Deuteronomy 1, 6 through 7. Yahuwah our Elohim spake unto us in Horeb, saying, Ye have dwelt long enough in this mount. Turn you and take your journey and go to the Mount of the Amorites and unto all the places near unto there unto in the plain, in the hills and in the valleys and in the south and by the seaside to the land of the Canaanites and unto Lebanon, unto the great river, the great river Euphrates. Now, let's look at this a little different because, you know, they say Lebanon. Now, you assuming that Lebanon is the Lebanon we know today, right? But let's look at the Britons. Let's go look at the Britons, the Septuagint. The Lord, this is the same verse. The Lord your God spoke to us in Horeb, saying, Let it suffice you to have dwelt so long in the Canaanites near the sea, and anti, anti Libanus, 
Libanus. Now, anti libanus Now, they say Lebanon here. Now, according to my research, in Second Edges, there's a Libanus, and that Libanus was Iran. But here they translate anti libanus as Lebanon. But yet I showed you there's another Ethiopia, not Ethiopia, <laughs> another Ephra or Euphrates in Africa, which makes more sense on the territory that God gave us and where the Jews were found. As far as the great river, the great river Euphrates, right? So all the way to the Niger River, behold, Yah has delivered the land before you go in and inherit the land, which I swear to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give it to them and to their seed after them. So Israel came out of Egypt, close to a million people. After 215 years, y'all, yeah, some of y'all believe 430 and 400, but anyway, we've been through that already. Israel came out of Egypt with all these folks just to go into the wilderness for 40 years. Some people died just to end up back across the street from Egypt. In a territory that's no bigger than Jersey, where all of these Jews are supposed to grow up and live. Because the land that was allocated to them supposed to sustain them in each one of the 12 tribes that grew exponentially. Somebody make it make sense. I know I ain't no getting through to some of y'all because some of y'all just, just brainwashed by Babylon, but let's use common sense. So then, you know, we got the Euphrates, we got the Tigris, we got all these rivers. And the demarcation is supposed to be from the Nile River to the Great River Euphrates. But y'all want me to believe that the two rivers that I showed you is the demarcation is Euphrates and Tigris or the Nile and Euphrates, whichever one you choose. But let's look at our inherited land, our territory, right? Now, y'all know we talked about it. We showed it in other videos that Africa was known as what family? Eden. Now, some people are going to say our cabal land. Okay. But it was also known as Eden. we If you don't believe me, go watch the other videos. We already discussed it. We looked at the maps. All right. So let's go look at Genesis chapter 2, verses 10 through 14. And the river went out of Eden. Can we say Africa? To water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. So there's a source of water in Eden that's split in the four, right? So if there's a source in Eden, which I told you is Africa, we I got videos on that, we discussed that. But the river split in the four. The name of the first was Pison, that is which compasseth the whole land of Havila, where there is gold. So Pison is one of the rivers that compasseth the whole land of Havila, where there's gold. And the gold of that land is good. There's Bedellum and Onyx stone. And the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. And I, 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 I'm going to make a case right quick. After this, and the name of the third is Hedekel, that is it which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth, now remember, it says it's heading east towards Assyria, it's not in Assyria, but it heads east toward Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. Now, time to use common sense. I know everybody don't have it. Gihon. The same is that that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. Now, some translations say Cush. Now, if you look at the old maps, the old maps you had upper and lower Ethiopia, which was what? In Africa, in areas where you would see the Congo and stuff like that going towards West Africa. Now, this way you need common sense. Okay? If they have a common source, I already talked about how Eden was known as Egypt. I'll, I mean, not Egypt, Africa. I already talked about how Eden was called Africa. 
But even if you don't believe that, common sense is going to put these rivers, all four of them, in Africa. Why? No, Jacoba, you got it wrong because the Euphrates is in the Middle East. You already showed it. Gihon is in Kush, which is in Ethiopia. That's what they call it. It's either Ethiopia or Kush. However you want to translate it, it's in Africa, right? Yes or no? If it's Ethiopia or Kush, either one, right? Come on, give me a one. If Gihon is in Ethiopia or it's Kush, whatever name you want to use, does that not put it in Africa? Yes or no? At least the Gihon. Yes or no? Yes or no? Give me a one. If it puts it in Africa, Gihon compasses the whole land of Kush or Ethiopia. That pushes it, that puts it in Africa. Now, my case is this. It also puts Pisan in Africa. It puts the Hedekel in Africa. And it puts what? The Euphrates in Africa. Well, how can you say that, Yacoba? How can you say that all four of the rivers are in Africa? Easy. Common sense. They all come from the same source. Come on now, family, right? They all come from the same source. If one of them is in Africa, then all four of them in Africa. Come on now. Somebody give me a yes if you agree with that. If one of them is in Africa, then all of them are in Africa because they come from the same source. Yes or no? See, some people got common sense. It makes sense. See, these people lie to you. They... They, they manipulate the text. They mistranslate things. But when you start asking the right questions, it don't look right. They didn't left and ran away from these Egyptians just to end up across the street. For real? Y'all believe that? Let me show you something else. The Tigris River, that's one of the rivers that supposedly came from the same source. But they got it in the Middle East. The Tigris River is one of the one is one of the four rivers in the Garden of Eden. Right? That's what they say. But they put it in the Middle East. But yet, Gihon is in Africa. Come, they got to come from the same source because they split from the same source. So it has to be in Africa. Logic. The Hebrew name for Tigris is Hedekel. It's a long river that is located east and almost parallel to the Euphrates. We saw that, right? It extends from present-day Turkey. Right? What? Wait, hold on. Wait, what? I thought, wait, huh? It extends from present-day Turkey through Syria and Iraq and into the Persian Gulf. It extends from Turkey. But they're supposed to be coming from the same source. As the river that's over there in Ethiopia or in Kush. It extends from present day Turkey. Well, what was Turkey known in ancient days, family? Well, you know, you could, but Turkey was part of the land given to Israel. That was part of our land, you could. Don't you know that? We have, yes, we own Turkey as well. We own Iraq as well. Well, what was it called in biblical days? Now, this is from Godby's book. Some of y'all need to go read Godby. Guess what Turkey was, y'all? Do you know what Turkey used to be called, boys and girls? 
Hittites. The land of the Hittites. Turkey was the land of the Hittites. So the land that was given to Israel demarcated by these rivers that came from the same source that the Gihon and the Euphrates came from, which is in Africa, some kind of way ends up way over here in Hittite land. But the land that was allocated to Abraham was from the great river Euphrates to the Nile River or the Wadi of Egypt. But Turkey is Hittite land. Somebody make it make sense. Maybe Jacob was a little slow. See, when people gaslight you and tell you what you're reading and what you see ain't real and that you don't understand the scriptures, common sense should be stepping in. Common sense should be stepping in. That God would not take his people and bring them to the wilderness of Arabia to live in Arabia for 40 years, supposedly hiding from the Egyptians, which is right down the road or across the sea, to bring them all the way up to the promised land that was filled with giants and fruits and grapes the size of a, of a man and all in the land that's a desert that's right across the street from the formal oppressor. I don't get it. Because some of y'all are still going to believe what you believe, but make it make sense. Make it make sense. Come on now. Make it make sense. Don't gaslight me. Don't come up with some BS. Moses said, these Egyptians you see, you ain't going to see no more, but you moved across the street. Come on now. I'm waiting for you. I'm going to put the link out there because I, 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 I want some, some of them People to come on here and explain it to well, you could well, you know you could well, you you just don't understand. You don't understand you could, but you just you you just missing the whole point, you could. See, it's clear because the Euphrates is in the Middle East, Yacoba. I've showed you that many times. Now, for those who got questions or comments, there's the link. I'm not going to pin it. Because I really want to hear your answer. I want to hear the foolishness that's going to come out your mouth. I really do. Come on. Uh Uh-oh, this is my partner in crime, Chantel. How's it going? (laughs) Hey. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. This is crazy. Listen, I've been telling people for years, please explain to me how they were wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. Uh, A million plus people, and that's men, that's counting men and able-bodied men. So we're not talking about the women, the children, the elderly and the infirmed. We're talking about men, a million plus men give or take here, yeah. and they didn't buck up with the um, with the Egyptians. And the, some of them weren't like, you know what, Moses on a, is on a long thing there. Let me go to the promised land. 
Like, it d does it make sense to anybody? Because it certainly never made sense to me. How are you going to, they, they would say things like, in I remember in church, they would say it could, it would take eight days or three, three to eight days to walk from Egypt to, to Israel. But That's at the longest so, point. If you go to the shortest point right here, you just go across the street. It, 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 there you go. There you go. So I'm like, so it takes them eight days maximum on the longest point. And there's a million plus, let's say probably give or take to maybe about four to five million probably, you know, when you count everybody else. Plus you've got all the the gold and the silver and everything that came out, the, the oxen, the sheep, all of that. And there weren't some strays who just thought, you know what, Moses, I, I'm not dealing with this. I've been in here for too long. I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> You're telling me nobody did that? The, the temptation, you know, because these were people who were so holy and so righteous, who didn't do things like as soon as they got out of Egypt, when Moses went 40 days up, up in the mountain and, you know, they didn't feel the need to go and make an idol. These are these are the same people that somehow they didn't end up just, you know. <laughs> but but Ron Wyatt found the crossing of the Red Sea with the chariots in the water. I don't care. He's an idiot. I'm a liar. <laughs> You're a liar. I don't care. Like, exactly. Like it's, too, it's too late in the day for all of this foolishness. If people, Jacob, I said to you, people ain't going to wake up anymore. The amount of people that have been awake, that's it. Nobody ain't waking up. The great awakening after those of us who woke up, you know, in 2014, 15, 16, and then a few after that, I think what Seventh-day Adventists called the loud cry they didn't hear. This was, I think this was um, what happened in last year with Kyrie and Kanye, because the whole world woke up and started looking at those people. And I said to people, they've gone away, but they're going to be back. Say, say, hold, back. hold on one sec, Chantel. Uh, mm. Revisionist, can you come on? I, 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 I like you to come on. I, I've been wanting to talk to you. Uh, I like to hear your part uh, on this, Revisionist. Uh, I'm gonna put the link out there again if you missed it. If you if you have the time to come on, but uh, yeah, go ahead, finish what you're saying, Chantel. And uh, some of the people saying you're real low. Am I low? Oh, yeah. I'm on. I'm up. I'm up high as well. Let me see. Is that any better? Can anybody hear me now? I mean, you, you still sound the same, but I mean, I can hear you, but you all low. Oh, okay. Uh, well. <laughs> I know That's last time you had to go on your computer or something. Yeah. Um, all right. I'm, I'll be back. I'm just, I'm probably going to change phones. So I'll be back. Let somebody else talk. Okay. All right. Eric. I'll mute yourself. Shalom. Shalom, okay. brother. You're cold, but can you hear me? Yeah. How you doing, brother Eric? How you doing? Hold on. Hold on. This thing, man. It's always a crap. Shalom. I try to, I try to come on. Yeah. Okay. Let me see Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. All right, cool, cool. So, cool. so be, before you go, I, 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 I give much respect to Revisionist. Uh, okay. I, I, I love his research. Y'all should check it out. But they restricted his channel um, from what he says. But uh, he has some good work. Uh, but go ahead, yeah. Cool. All right. Oh my God. Listen. All you have to do is go to the table of nations, all right? It's going to explain to you who is who, where they came from, who their daddy is. You understand? Yeah. That's all you have to they, they can't tell us any old thing no more. We can read now. You understand? Exactly. Thank you. This book, and we can see for ourselves. Now, explain something to me. Genesis chapter 3. Verse 11 talks about the Python, the Python that compasses, uh, I'm sorry, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't like to give wrong information. Let me just get this. Here. Do you Let mean me, the Gihon? The, no, no, no. The, the first, Python? the Python. Oh, the first river. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's verse 11, right? Yeah. So yeah. We can't hear you, brother. 
We can't hear. Do y'all hear him? Uh, or am I cut off? Somebody let me know. Hello? If I, if, yeah. I didn't, I didn't know if you shut off or if it was me. Who was it? Hello? Yeah, brother Eric. Can you hear me? Can y'all hear us? Give me a one. Give me a one if you hear me. I, I can hear you. I cannot hear him. Okay, just want to make sure. All right, we'll move on to Misfit Fee. How you doing, brother Yakoba? And uh, shalom to everyone. Shalom to the panel, and everybody in the chat. Um, I've been saying I've been wondering this for years too, and you know, even when they showed us this in church, and it just it never really made sense to me. Like, how did we end up back across from Egypt if and it, it never really made sense to me how it took us 40 years to wander somewhere close to where we were already were. It just never quite made sense to me when I would always ask the question about it. They, you know, it was never really fully explained. And even after I woke up in 2014, it still was a little, you know, fuzzy to me. It just, it never made sense. And then when you think about the people that are there now, and I'm like, and that right there should have told you the, those they, they weren't the people because they have the highest rate of skin cancer there. So how were they able to wander 40 years in the desert without getting affected in some way, shape or form? That right there should have told you that they weren't the people and that wasn't the land. And then it just it just never make just never made sense to me at all. And so this 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 what you were explaining makes perfect sense, makes perfect sense. And you could see where they switched it around too, even in the word. You could see where they switched it around, where they just, oh well, we'll just put this in here and say that that's where the land is. Yeah, just like when they used the word wilderness or desert and translated it as the Negev. You can't do that. No, you, <laughs> the word says you can't do that. <laughs> so, I mean, it. I mean, it, this makes sense. I don't see why people are still defending it. And, it. and even when you put it into context of like America being the promised land that then that would that would negate the the sense that some people think this is our land why would we, why would this be our land if this is being destroyed why would we escape just for us to go right across the street and say hey we're here we 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 made it out of the out of the uh evil and now we can just go back that doesn't make sense yeah <laughs> we got we got Israelites saying America our homeland the land of our captivity that we got to be delivered from but we already here come on yeah, it, it doesn't make sense. And I hope that and pray that those people that are saying that, that they wake up to that from that, because whoever it is that's teaching that relic, I don't I don't know what's wrong with them. <laughs> common sense ain't common. All right. Thank you, Miss Fit Fee. I'm going to move on to Sister Betty. Shalom, Minister Yakova and the panel. I miss you guys tremendously. But I've been so busy getting my son and his family um, ready to go on to the continent. And Yakoba, yes, they did make it there safe. Arthur and the entire family are no longer in the U.S. For good? For good. Uh oh When you going, Sister Ben? I'm going in February. Oh, okay. Not for good. Not for, oh, good. not for good. Okay. No, not for good. Just three or four weeks. Okay. But Yakoba, listen, don't y'all know scripture talks about He's going to send up send, this delusion and that they're going to believe a lie. See, he allowed us to wake up out of that delusion. You know you had to be in delusion, sitting your silly self running around here talking about Santa Claus and the great pumpkin and all this foolishness. You know you had to be delusional. And we waking up, he, he woke us up. So And he said he was going to scatter us four corners of the earth. The earth the world, how in the world we just end up in a little dust bowl with no mountain trees, no milk and honey, no floor and how? How could that be possible? How could you still believe that? Because they are still in a great delusion and they're going to be the lie. And yes, they can rewrite scripture and change it around and move this book and that book. Who is the conqueror gets to write his story. They get to write their story. They're not going to write our story. 
And of course, we're going to believe their story because we're still in their land, the land of our oppressors. They wrote the history books. They wrote all the school books. And now Ron DeSantis, retarded looking self in Florida, trying to rewrite history books so they don't look like the demons that they are. I probably won't get no strikes, but I can't help it. It's the truth. You want to stay in this delusion and get ready for the murderous day of, of Thanksgiving? You want to stay in this delusion? Go ahead, you cobra. You can, you can bleed out and die. These people still won't wake up, but I still commend you and give all praises and honor to the Most High for you still getting old and gray-headed trying to wake these people up. Look at you. You going through something you already did. Yeah, yeah. How many different ways are you going to explain this to these stiff-necked people? How many different ways can you bring in your cobra? I'm looking for the next day when you try to bring it a different way. <laughs> I'm looking for that. Because I'm like, oh, my God, you're doing this again? But I understand why you're doing it. But just look at it. They don't want to hear that. They want to stay in this delusion because guess what? Halloween is here. Thanksgiving is here. And all this other foolishness. I'm sorry, my brother. Yeah. I'm so, sorry, but you're doing a good works, but it's retarded. Yeah. So, Sister Betty, you and I are supposed to talk, right? You already know it. I ain't forgot. Okay. All right. Send but me an email know, so we can meet up. I, 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 I am because I, I, Jacoba, what I got to tell you, I got to tell you. I got to tell you, I got to, I got to do my best to convince you and your wife I know in your other thing, but you got to come on. I got to tell you. Yeah. I got you now. I keep telling you that. The most high got me where I got you. Yeah. So, so Sister Betty. Yeah. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to come back around. And, yeah, uh, go ahead. I, yes. And I'm going to come back to you, Hot Sauce, but I, I, I want to talk to Revisionists. I've been wanting to yes, talk to go. you for a while. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Sister Betty. Revisionists, how you doing? You have to unmute yourself. Oh, you are unmuted. We don't hear you. Let's see. Okay, he's working on it. So while while revision is working on it, let's go to hot sauce. Hot sauce, how's it going? Um, no, because I actually want to hear what he has to say too. So I'll 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 wait. Okay. Or yeah, I'll, I'll... All right, well, I'm gonna go back around until he can talk. But he left. Oh, okay. he left. Okay. He'll, he'll be back, I guess, if he could get it working. So, uh, yeah, go yeah, ahead. Cause I, yeah, because I kind of have, I kind of have, uh, I kind of have the homeland sort of where he has it as well, more or less around the same place. Just probably for me, probably a little bit lower. But <clears throat> I guess <clears throat> speaking to the to the to the topic at hand, I mean, look, man, the 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 scripture says that you know. We 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 love Babylon. It's 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 in it's in us. It's been in us for four uh, four hundred years, and if I'm not mistaken, you know, uh, e, uh, Eber was born in Babylon actually, right? Before we were Israelites, we were Babylonian, so we come from there. That that is who we are before we were we were pulled out as to be a separate nation among all nations. So of course we're going to. And since we're and since we've been out of the covenant, of course we're going to kind of revert back to that. Even for those that quote unquote may be woken up, of course you know you're going to have people who spread lies, people who are going to be uh, wolves in sheep clothing, and you're going to have people believe that because again, before we were we were before Abraham was taken out, Eber was born in Babylon, right? We are Babylonian, so. We're just kind of reverting back to that. So, I mean, it's it's absolutely insane that you can think America is the is the promised land. Like, even 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 if you just know basic history of the slave trade, it's it's absolutely impossible to believe that. It's utterly impossible. Or Mexico or anywhere in the North or South America is absolutely impossible. But then again, right? Babylon, Babylon is in our heart as a people. Babylon is in uh, is is ingrained in, in our soul. We've been here for four hundred years, and 
we we thrive on dysfunction. That's that's the community that we had, right? So at the end of the day, it's very easy to believe that because it's 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 in us as a community, unfortunately. Yeah. So yeah, yeah so I'll I'll just pass it on that. But unfortunately, you know, that's how it is. Yeah. Okay. Uh look like we're really uh having connection problems. So uh who who uh I think um who's next? Uh Jesse, I think is next thing we come back to Eric and Garth. Um but soon as it soon as uh he comes back on, I'm I'm gonna pause with whoever's talking and then go to revisionist uh jesse hey what's up uh brother yakoba in the panel um man i agree with you 100 percent. i've been telling people that for years and i was just talking to this pastor yesterday his church i used to go to i guess he's assistant pastor so many of us are so misinformed man that was one of the reasons why i left the place where i was at um what you were saying it was absolutely correct, man. Right, right on point, as as usual. That place over there is not even really the Middle East. It's really East Africa. Yeah, it, it's not even the Middle East. And as far as that being the promised land, it's impossible because Christ in in Matthew's twenty four, you know, Yeshua said to the disciples of Mount of Olives, he said. They was asking questions. When is Sonny coming? Then he said, see that nobody dis, uh, deceives you. And he also said something that was very pivotal that debunks that wailing wall over there. He said that not one stone will be left. Not one. So if that's the wailing wall, then that means that Yeshua's prophecy was incorrect. Because he said that no stone will be left. So, okay, why is it that they're all, they're saying that that's the wailing wall and everybody and their mother goes over there to have prayer in a fake land? And also, it's blocked off. It's really Palestine. If you go back to the Ottoman Empire, you see how it all came to, to, to fashion, especially if you read the Balfour Declaration. I'm sure you have. So it's like, that is definitely not the place. Is it? It's not the people. And uh, when you go and look at, what was it, Esau and Jacob, that'll give you your answer right then and there. That those aren't the people. It's a fake place, a fake land that isn't the promised land. You know, my mother's even been there. And I tell, I told her over and over again, I said, Mom, she went into Egypt. I said, the most authentic, authentic place you've been to was Africa and Egypt. But as far as you being in the Holy Land, you wasn't there. Even though you thought you was there, you weren't there. And I went back and forth with her until she finally understood that that wasn't the place. You know? Yeah. So I'm going to park it right there. All right. Thank you, Jesse. All right. Brother Eric, uh, come back to you shalom. since you got disconnected. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. Yeah, man. There's always some foolishness with this um thing. But uh, I just want to big you up, Yakoba. Excellent, excellent research. Excellent research as always. And the thing I wanted to say was, how I, I, I saw, I was listening to some chat. I'm not going to say no name. And the gentleman was saying how he was talking about the Euphrates and the Tigris. But somehow he managed to forget about the Python and the Gihon. And see, these people have an agenda. Because if you locate the Pishon and the Gihon, remember, it says one river turned into four rivers, right? Yep. If you locate the Pishon and the Gihon, you're going to find it in Africa. See, they don't want to deal with that. They're going to find them two rivers that they want to always forget about. But they quick to talk about the Euphrates and the Tigris because they go up to Turkey and all this, all this nonsense. Find the Python and the Gihon, and it's going to be in Africa because that's where civilization started. That's where Adam started. Yep. And I mean, it's, it, the, the, the continent of dissonance is, is remarkable. It talks about Ethiopia. Where's Ethiopia? It talks about his son, Havila. It compasses the whole land of Havila. Who is Havila? Havila is Cush's son. 
No one will argue that the that the, the the Ethiopians are black. There was black in antiquity. Then there was black during the our ancient um, um when we was in um Egypt. They, they argue yeah. today because they argue that black Egypt now. was white. <laughs> they black, they, that's the one nation that the Europeans couldn't conquer and yeah. whitewash. Yeah, <laughs> and it was and it, and the Most High did that for a reason. He made sure because you have to deal with Ethiopia. You have to deal with Ethiopia. They, and they call the Ethiopians, Ethiopians Caucasians. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing how they could just turn off logic and common sense and just spew a whole lot of foolishness. The re Do you know, a lot of people don't know this, but do you know there's just as many pyramids in Ethiopia, just on a smaller scale, than it is in Egypt? I mean, now, I, know, I know in Sudan. And Sudan, in Sudan, yeah. yeah. Now, why is that? You want to know why? Because Misraim, Cush, Put, and Canaan are brothers. Yeah. Yeah. But they don't want to deal with that. They just want to act like, oh, so now you would ask some of these Egyptians, these present day Egyptians. You said, let me ask you a question. Now, I'm a Negro. Now, you're, you call yourself white or whatever you want to call yourself, Middle Eastern or whatever. But let me ask you a question. You have any siblings that look like me? You know what they're going to say? They're going to say no. So you explain to me how Ethiopia was black then, was black during Egypt and black now, but none of your uh, siblings look like him. Somebody lying. <laughs> Some land was conquered and taken over. Colonialism happened and they whitewashed everything. You, you, the, 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 the main problem is as tall as them pyramids are, they can't get around them. Look, if they could, if, if the pyramids wasn't there, it might be a different story. But they can't get around those pyramids, so they don't want you to. They they don't want you to deal with that. They just gonna tell you they're Middle Eastern. They weren't black people in antiquity uh, uh, in that area. Forget about the murals. Forget about the, the 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 hieroglyphics. Forget about the statues that look Negroid. No, 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 no. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Don't that your lie. Your eyes are lying to you, brother Yakoba. Good research as usual. Big ups to you. And uh, keep doing keep doing your thing, man. You're, you're gonna keep smashing and mashing these people up with their lies. Oh yeah, I'm gonna keep throwing the mic down. You know, all right, cool. That's it. That's all I got. All right, brother Eric, brother Golf. Shalom, brother Yakova. Honestly, I don't have too much patience for people who still think that land is up there and the size of and is the size of, of New Jersey. And I, I just can't, you know, reconcile it. Um, I could just point out the fact that it said in Joel 3 that the land would be parted and we'd be sold on to the Grecians. I mean, what other land has been parted like Africa? And our, our people need to wake up. Like, why would, like, what was Central Republic Africa before they called it that? What was South Africa before they called it that? Yeah. Nigeria was a British royal name, named after a British royal, I don't know, company or something, a princess or whatever. Like, there's been so much ob just, oh, oh man, whatever that word is, obfuscation of uh, land, places, and people, especially us. So, like, when we found out that we were the people, I mean, I was, I was happy. I was in that first stage. And then, you know, I started to think, okay, if we're the people, so how could that land be ours? And then I just started to look at the research and then... I mean, come on, people, you know that they try to make Uganda uh, present day um, uh, Israel before and or and or Kenya. They tried to make all those yes, lands they did. above there. They tried <laughs> to literally do that. And like 1948, all of a sudden they just started to make uh, all this legislation to um, move there. And at the same time. You know, all of a sudden, like you, you just ignore all the apartheid in South Africa. Like, you know, that didn't matter. Like, again, if you look at where the Berlin conference took place and they were like, oh, let's all make a conspiracy to part their land. I mean, that's a conspiracy. That's Psalms 1183. They all came together and said, let's not fight over this land. We all hate these people. Let's scatter them and let's part their land and let's like let's cause them to forget and no one else will know except for us that's a that sounds like a grand conspiracy to me but 
at the same time, you also can look at old maps and, you know, there are brothers and sisters in Africa saying, yeah, these old, these old maps show different lands. And you could tell they were saying how, how they've like, especially with the language now that they speak in that land, you could see how they've changed like different modifiers on land. So they could take a, they could add an A here or an H here or whatever vowels are not in Africa to, to change whatever um, narrative they wanted to do. So, I mean, that's all I really have to say. Yeah, and don't don't forget that they wanted to, uh, you know, the Ish people wanted to move to the area of Uganda and Kenya, you know. But hey, Africa ain't here. Right? <laughs> All right, thanks, golf. Uh, Don. Uh, oh, and uh, revisionist. Uh, look like your connection, uh, probably with your microphone or something, not working. So try unplugging it or, or something. All right, brother Don. Hey, Yakoba. Man. What's up, Dan? You know, our folks have to come out of the swine coma that they go into from Sunday to Saturday night. And they need to read because if you read and you start to ask questions then none of what they're saying makes sense and that's even before you learn real true history like the brother was saying how they wanted uh uganda and part, so, part of kenya so brother don let me let me pause you for a second the, the I've, been, I've been let me pause you for a second i've been having trouble getting revisionists on revisionists are you there Are we good? I, I can't hear re revisionists. All right. Uh, you, you finish what you were saying, brother Don. Uh, revisionists, when you when you are able to talk, just just start talking. Yeah. So just say I'm here. But go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Don. Okay. So um, yeah. Where 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 are the animals? Where are the animals? We're the lions that we read about in scripture. The lion was fascinating to me in this one story. But where where are the animals? Where, where are the things that are described? These people have had their hands all up in stuff. But the Most High only allowed them to make so many revisions or transliterations. So that the truth would be there for his children. Can you guys hear me? When he woke them up. Yeah, hey, hold, hold on, brother. Don. I, uh, yeah, can, hear can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. We hear you. Okay, thank you so much for having me, guys. I'm, I'm really excited to talk to you. Man, Revisionist, I've been wanting you on here for the longest. I'm glad you showed up. Thank you so much. I, I discovered this by chance. I was I was on my computer, and then suddenly this, this showed up. Nice oh, to be here, guys. So, Ravina, I really love your work. And, uh, you. you know, uh, when you talked about the Yam stuff and everything and the migration routes, uh, what do you think uh, in terms of people who still believe that land is, is the land? And uh, can you talk a little bit about, you know, your findings? Okay, what do you want to know exactly? Because, like, like for instance, the I idea. Love, of, first of all, I just want to say the, the, the videos that you see, I have not uploaded for, I think, almost three years now. Yeah. So the videos, I think I have like 14 or 15 videos, something like that. So the, the, the that's just the tip of the iceberg. It's nowhere near uh, close to all the research that's out there. This is this is was just, you know, just the tip of the iceberg. There is a lot more. There is and I a know lot you, more. You had a website that got shut down too? They shut down everything. They shut down my channel. The, the, uh, no, sorry. They, they, uh, they removed my, my website and they refused to allow me to update the uh, the 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 url and they uh, they manipulated my views on youtube even to this day the channel the youtube channel only has uh, 6000 uh, followers or something like that yeah they do so the same they, to us they they remove subscribers from us and everything oh yes oh yes that that's why i uh, i i was i was very hesitant to upload more 
But that's just the tip of the iceberg. There is a lot more to discover, actually. So, yes, well, so, I'm sorry. But what was the question? Uh, so, about... so like with the Yamsuf and the Red Sea, can you talk a little bit about that? The Yamsuf, I think at this moment, I think it's very clear now that if you just read the Bible, you can see that the Yamsuf is very clear. It's it's the uh, it's the Nile River. It can yeah. only be the Nile River. The Bible re refers to it as a river, a uh, Yor. Yor means river, and I'm not fam I'm not familiar with any other river that that fits into that category. And also in Egypt, there is only one seasonal river, and it's the Nile River. So it is the Nile River, and it can only be the Nile River. So it's one of those things that it's almost a religious, it's religious self-deception almost. They, they want to believe that it's it's the Red Sea or they want to believe these things. So there, really, there is nothing to, uh, there is nothing to debate there. If they believe that it's the Red Sea, then let them believe it. But the Bible doesn't support them. I agree. <laughs> I've been, I've been trying to communicate this to a lot of people and still get pushed back. And I'm like, Nothing else really makes sense but the Nile. And, you know, once you understand that the Yamsuf is the Nile River, all of the inform all of the context yes. of the scripture starts making sense. Simply ask them one question. Ask them, what is the uh, what is the Yamsuf in the Bible? What, what is the how does the Bible describe the Yamsuf? Is it a river? Is it a sea? And when I say the Bible, I mean the Hebrew text, not the uh, not the translation. What yeah. does the Hebrew text describe the Yom Suf as? And it will become very clear. It, it describes it as a river. Like I said, the word is Yeor. Yeor means river. The only river on <laughs> in Egypt is the Nile River. There so, is let, so let me ask you a question. Uh, so through my research, I've come to the conclusion that Jerusalem is in the highlands of Ethiopia. Where do you believe Jerusalem is? Jerusalem is Yeha. Yeah, yeah. Yes, the the, the Yeha temple is this is, is Solomon's temple. That is the holy temple, and it's been it's being rebuilt as we speak right now. So that is it's what they call the the moon temple, but it's not a moon temple. It's just it's it's not a moon temple. It's the uh, it's it's Solomon's temple. So do you think that is different from Herod's temple? Herod's temple. Well, you mean the one in uh, in modern day Palestine? Well, no, the one, you know, the most high said that not one stone will be left upon another. Right. So um, we know that, uh, you know, Herod had uh, rebuilt the temple and made it more lavish. Right. Yes. So uh, how could the Yeha be uh, the temple? When you, And this is going to make a lot of people upset. But when it comes to the New Testament, and I have to first let me just make clear what, what my religious belief is. Okay. So that you know, so that there are no misunderstandings, so that people know where, where my position is. I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Jew. I'm I'm Muslim. I, I believe in Islam. That's my religion. Okay. So, but I do believe in the Old Testament, and also I do believe in the remnants of of the New Testament. So Herod and the the, the story about Herod and I personally am not convinced that. The New Testament was written by people who, who had firsthand, uh, firsthand source, if I may put it like that. It was more oral tradition transmitted from one generation to another, until it was it was written down centuries after Jesus' time. So the temple in the story about Herod and this and that, it seems to me more like what what I would call people, people using the history that was in that region in, in greece and rome and, and and trying to fit it into the jesus story so for example there was a man whose name was jesus he used to preach okay we believe that we think that jesus lived in palestine according to the history that we have heard okay at that time who was there a king named herod and then from that moment on i think that they tried to stitch the things together but i'm not convinced by the new testament as a reliable historical source the Old so, Testament, on the other hand, is a different story. So what do you think of uh, the Old Testament? It talks about Yeshua. Yeshua, I, I, again, I'm Muslim. I do believe in Jesus. I, I okay. believe as a prophet of God, a messenger of God. I don't believe that he was crucified. I don't believe in any of these things. I think that he was a normal, he was a prophet of God. I do believe that. I also do believe that the modern-day 
Christian faith is based on stories of a Messiah, Jesus, uh, the true Jesus, the one who, who lived in Ethiopia, lived there his whole life, preached the Gospels, preached that there was only one God, did not preach anything about the Trinity or anything like that. Later on, whatever happened, whether he was killed or dead or whatever, his disciples dispersed throughout the world. And like any other religion, when they disperse, they take with them their religious belief. Within maybe a century or so, that religion is the, the original Christianity, which was the belief in one God and Jesus as a messenger of God. That was later transmitted throughout the world, even to the Mediterranean. The problem is in the Mediterranean, you already had religions, old ancient pagan religions. that They believed in Zeus and this and that, and that's where... So they believed they already believed in something that's that uh, that uh, something that resembled modern day Trinity. They already believed in multiple gods. So that's where the mix comes from. The original Hebrew teaching, which was one God, Jesus as a prophet of God, mixed with the modern day, mixed with the already existing culture, cultural beliefs in the Greek, in, in Greek, in, in Greece, which was uh, son of God and God becoming three and things like that. So that's where the mix comes from. So that's how I view Christianity. I don't I don't believe in the New Testament as the word of God. Okay. But you do believe in the Old Testament? I do believe in the Old Testament as a historical document. Of course, it's not 100% pure, but it is. I believe that it's much better uh, preserved. Okay, because in the Old Testament, they do refer to uh, Yeshua, but not as Yeshua, right? They, yeah. There's, uh, you know, uh, yes. The word of God, and there's um, uh, Isaiah, uh, what is it, uh, 53, that talks about the suffering servant, things like that. So um, yes. that depends on how you, if you, if I can tell you like this, all the, all the prophecies about Jesus or all the prophecies that Christians believe refer to Jesus. If you ask a Jew or someone who's, who doesn't believe in Christianity, they will tell you that none of this that none of this applies to jesus the suffering servant they they they, they see that as a as a symbol for the jewish people so there, there are different ways of interpreting these things but for a person i can i can understand that all these prophecies you believe that they refer to jesus personally yeah, i'm not convinced can I ask a question? yeah can I have a... go ahead go ahead go ahead hassle okay i have two questions Yes. Um. Well, I have three questions. So okay. when we when you say Yeha, Yeha means Yeha in Ethiopia. You believe yes. Jerusalem is there. Of, of course. Okay. And then the second second question, you said that uh, this was t the tip of the tip of the iceberg, and there was more. What are some of the more things that you would have liked to upload that you uh, have not uploaded? Well, first, I would I would like to upload about the. Uh, about the four i would talk about for example adam the, the original humans i would talk about the original garden of eden about the cain and abel story which region of the which part of the world that that is actually referring to would you say that kenya and uh, uganda garden of eden would you say that would be kenya the or? garden of eden when we look at the old testament it, it seems that eden was not just africa but that it was what we today would call the Middle East, and also our Africa, uh, especially East Africa, Ethiopia, Yemen, all that region, even the Middle East, which is why I, I think it was, someone was asking you about the four rivers. How can they be? How can three be in Ethiopia? Uh, how can three be in Africa and one be in the Middle East? And well, the answer to that is that the Middle East and Africa was was considered Eden according to the Bible. That is Eden. Eden is. Iraq and all that region and also part of East, part of East Africa that is Eden so when the Bible talks about one river breaking up into four rivers it's three okay. in modern day Africa and one in Iraq it's still the same region it's it's Eden so Eden was a very large it's it's a very large uh, area very okay large so so from my my research I was I have been very sick this whole week, so that's why I'm, I'm my energy is very low and I, I'm not very articulate. So I, I apologize. No, 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 no problem. And, 
in my last my my last two questions, and I guess I'll just ask it together because give sure. I uh, give other people. Uh, so the last question is, um, do you believe that the people who call themselves Jewish are the Jews of the Bible, no. of the no. Old Testament? No. And okay. And my last no. question is, yes, uh, no. where? I'm sorry. No, the answer is just no, an emphatic no. Okay. They're not. They're not the people of the Bible at all. Okay. And then my last question is. Uh, when you're looking for like your resources for research, where are yes. some of the places that you go to to uh, look for the, it? the places where I travel? Or I don't I don't understand. No, where where are the, where are the places that you go to look for this type of information? Because be, when you first came on, you said there's so much information out there. So yes. people who who are interested in doing their own self studies and look for information, uh, where would you advise them to go to kind of research how you have done your own research? The number one place when you're studying the Bible, the first place to go is the Bible itself. But well, you of course, rely, you cannot rely on the on the uh, you cannot rely on uh, translations. You have to rely on the real Hebrew Bible. So when mm -hmm. you're reading the Old Testament, you have to at least be able to look up the words and what they mean and so on. Right. And after that, and then after that, you just match it with biblical archaeology, for example. You, uh, I'm, I, I'm very, I'm a big fan of Israel Finkelstein. You know, I, I love, I love reading his books, and just read archaeology, study archaeology. Study so speaking of that, revisionist, can you talk a little bit about the archaeology that has been done in modern Israel and how they have not found uh, a lot of the biblical uh, locations that the Bible speaks of? They have, as far as I'm concerned, and again, I'm a huge fan of Israel, Israel Finkelstein. I would advise everyone to read his books. And it's very clear that they are very honest about the fact that they haven't found anything of substance. They know without any doubt that there is no exodus. It was impossible for it to be an exodus to modern-day Palestine or Israel. It would be impossible if they have not found Solomon's temple. They have not found anything. So even the things that they present as, for example, when they talk about uh, Herod's temple, the modern day temple in uh, the temple in modern day Palestine or Israel, or whatever you call it, it's known to have not have anything to do with the Old Testament. It's known to be much, much younger. So these things have nothing to do with the Bible. They have nothing to do with the biblical history. And it, this is a amongst you, you have two different groups in uh, archaeologists. You have the minimalists and you have the maximalists. The minimalists are the ones who believe that none, nothing in the Bible is true. And when they say nothing in the Bible is true, they just mean nothing in in Palestine, nothing in, in that region confirms the biblical history, which I agree with because it's the wrong place to look. And then you have the maximalists. The maximalists are usually people who have a religious conviction, who are Christians, who are who Jews, who desperately really want to believe that Palestine is... A holy region but the minimalists know that there is nothing there there, there is no proof of anything there, there is no exodus israel finkelstein himself said it he said it would be impossible for there to have been an exodus to palestine just impossible because we know that both palestine and egypt was controlled by egypt mm -hmm. can you imagine the runaway slaves running from new york to settle in the South, Southern America. It makes no sense because yeah. the United States was one country and controlled by the, by the same regime. Same thing in, 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 in ancient times. Palestine and Egypt was controlled by Egypt. How do you escape Egypt to go and settle in Palestine when Palestine had Egyptian soldiers there? So it is impossible. So, and, so, and, so why do you think they called... Palestine, Philistine. It, again, it's well. What do you mean? When did they start calling it Palestine? Well, before it, before it was called Palestine, it used to be called Land of the Philistines. So, uh, not really. I mean, if you look at the, uh, if you look at, for example, in the, the Islamic era, which is not that long ago, modern day Jerusalem was known as Eilat. That was the name. It was not called Palestine. Yeah, by it the was, Arabs, but I'm talking about by the by the Europeans. They call yes, that they, exactly because they saw Jews settling. I mean, I I, I, I think I, I did a video about the uh, 
Hebrew history, hidden Hebrew history in uh, the African uh, or something like that. I don't remember the exact title, but where I show you that the origin of the Palestine uh, of the uh, the origin of the modern day Israel story, how they all started, how everybody started thinking that that region was the place of the Bible. It goes back to the first convert Jews from uh, Babylon. Remember Babylon, you have Babylon and then you have Persia. Persia conquers Babylon. When Persia conquers Babylon, who is in, in Babylon at that time? The Hebrews. The conqueror tells the Hebrews that they can go back to their homeland. But before they leave, they have also people. They have among the Persians, they have converts who converted to the Jewish faith. Again, this is a long story, but who converted to the Jewish faith. When they convert to the Jewish faith, the, the Hebrews go back to the original land, which is Ethiopia. That causes a split. Few generations later, the convert, the Persian converts, are now convinced that they are the only Hebrews, that they are the original Hebrews. Why? Because three, four, five generations has passed. And they now believe that they're actually the Israelites. They start looking into the Bible. They start looking at the, they want to see a historical, they want to see which, okay, well, which land was the Bible referring to. They started to look around and they found that they were Canaanites living in modern day Palestine. The Bible says that the Canaan was the land, was the holy land. So they started associating, they started identifying modern day Palestine as, as the Hebrew, as the, as the biblical holy land. So that's because, where the, where that's where the story begins, and from that moment on, the the Romans just echoed what the convert Persians say, what the okay. what the convert Persians believe. So, so that according, is, according to Job three, uh, Philistia is on the coast, right, in modern day okay. Palestine, which the Europeans call Philist Philistines, uh, is on the coast of the Mediterranean, and okay. uh, according according to uh, some of the research I've done, the Tuaregs uh, stated that they are descendants of the Philistines. What do you think of that? I would be lying if I said that I uh, that I have heard that before. Uh, I oh, can okay. only talk about things that I'm certain of. But okay. the Tuaregs, do you mean the Berbers of, of North Africa? The the black Berbers? Yeah, they're they're the, Ber they're the Berbers. Uh, they live yes. in the uh, near the Sahara. Yes, uh, and, actually, I actually know one of them. I have a friend who's from that, those people. Yeah. I have no idea. Again, the Philistines are. We also have to remember that this is not two. This is not five hundred years ago. This is almost three thousand years ago. It actually was three thousand years ago. So people, how, how they look back then and their descendants today, it's very difficult to know who descends from whom. So, but what do you think? Some people will say. Uh, well, the Middle East is what we call the Middle East, modern Israel, is yes. the area because we know Romans were there, but no Romans were in Ethiopia area. What would you say to that? I would say to that that if you are a Christian who believes in the New Testament, then yes, that is a good argument. But like I said, I don't consider the New Testament any reliable source. And I say that respectfully. I I, I, I personally has, have validated that uh, Romans were all, all in that area. And in Ethiopia. In, I in think Ethiopia, I've, yeah. Yes, I think I've seen your video. Uh, I yeah. think I've seen your video. Yes, but again, uh, this is one of those uh, one of those details that demand a lot more research. And one of the problems with Ethiopia today is that very little archaeological dig digs or research has been done in that region. Yeah, that's true. I think maybe four or five percent of Ethiopia has been has been uh, researched. I think that's on purpose too. <laughs> of course, of course, of course. I personally believe that it's divinely protected. I don't think that. Yeah. I don't think that a holy land can just be, you know. So I think it's divinely protected. But I also do know that very little research has been done in that region. So it's difficult to say who was there and who was not there. But I'm not familiar with any historical documents that would prove that that the Romans were there. Yeah, I had brought it up. Uh, I forgot the particular area, uh, what the name of it is. It's, it's in I my think videos. It was Adulis or something like that, I think it was. What was it? Adulis or something like that. The, Adulis, yeah, 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 yeah. In the Adulis, yes. yeah. Yeah, the yes. Romans were there. I would have to look into that, but I personally, I have not, I'm not familiar with. Oh, I can put it like this. You're the first person that I've heard say that. Okay. So let me oh. ask you, uh, Revisionist, where are you originally from? I'm originally from East Africa. <clears throat> okay, Ethiopian area or what? Uh, I'm Somalian. 
Oh, it's Somalia. Okay. And, you know, I, I did some research on that. And there, there's these guys I uh, I like a lot. Uh, they, it's called their, their channel is Lam Lim. Have, have you ever one? saw their channels? Which one is that? Which channel? Uh, it's called L- L- Lam Lim. I have not seen it. And, uh, you know, they, they go through some of the words and how the words were uh, transliterated on some of the European maps. And, uh, you know, one of the interesting things, like if you go and look at the original Hebrew uh, for Samuel, uh, is pronounced it's similar to... to uh, yes, the Hebrew, the ancient, I'm, I'm sorry for cutting you off, but the ancient Hebrew is much closer to the modern day Bantu languages. The one, right. The Which Bantu, Bantu? The Bantu language. I, oh, yeah, yeah, the Bantu, Bantu language, Bantu, yeah. Bantu, but but there's so. some similarities in pronunciation and phonetics uh, for what we call um, modern Hebrew in the Bible, right? Yes. So like uh, Somalia, uh, is, if you go look at it in, in these Strong's and stuff like that, it, it's it's... It's the same word or similar word for Samuel. Uh, what do you think of that? No, no. Okay. This is the problem. When you rely on uh, on translations, then this, this can occur. I even heard someone say that the word uh, Amorites and the word Moors are the same. Well, if you look at the Hebrew word Amorites, it sounds very different from the English word. So, for example, Amorite in, in the Bible, it's Imharim. It's a completely different pronunciation. And the same thing with Samuel. Samuel, yes, in English, Samuel, Somali, yes, it sounds, it sounds the same. But Shamuel and the Hebrew Shamuel and Somalia, personally, I don't, I don't, I don't, see, any, I don't see any connection. So, yeah, I mean, uh, if, 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 you, if you look at the Hebrew, if you look at the Hebrew, there is a phonetic similarity. And, uh, you know, uh, when you look at how the Europeans transliterate, they yes. transliterate from the original word and then they, you know, come up with their own phonetic. Yes, but, like but I mean, to me, to me, I think there was some valid- validity to it. But go ahead, uh, Hasso. Yeah, so I have, I have uh, just two quick questions, because from my research, my research, um, my research would suggest that uh, Somali, uh, Somalis were the original ancient Egyptians. <clears throat> what is your, what is your view about that? And then who do you think are the real uh, Israelites of ancient time? Uh, first, the Somali question. If the Somalis are the original uh, Egyptians. Yes. If you look at the, uh, for example, if you look at the sources in um, in Egypt, the ancient Egyptian sources, they say mm-hmm. that the original, that their land of origin was the land, Tana Jetro, whatever. Or in that right. in that punt was the original was the land of origin, like like so Sudan. But the question is, what what does the word punt mean? A lot of people just quote the the, the opinion that says that punt was in modern day Somalia. Okay, but that's just one that's just one definition of the word. The word punt, I would say, is like the word America. Does when you say America, what do you mean? Do you mean the country? Or do you mean Brazil, which technically is also America? Mm. Same thing with the word punt. When you say punt, do you mean uh, punt as in the Horn of Africa, which is what the word punt literally means? It means, it actually means bon. Any Somali will tell you that the word bon literally means horn. It's a blow horn that the ancient Somali used to use. And mm. that's where, the, that's because it, that's what the Horn of Africa looks like, like a horn. So when they well, say. The- it, it could it could mean Somalia, but Punt also had a much larger definition, and that definition included everything east of the Nile River, including right. modern day Middle East. Right. Well, the reason the reason why I ask that is because when you look at uh, art history, because I'm a big fan of art history, yes. when you look at the uh, traditional clothing, the tra- the traditional clothing, the garbs, uh, the swords. Like when you look at um. Somali ancient art, and you look at uh, Egyptian ancient art; they're very, very similar. They're carbon copy of each other. I, uh, when yeah. when Hatshepsut did her voyage to Somalia, she did not even need a translator, because in every other voyage that the that the Egyptians did, they always brought a uh, translator. But when she went to Somalia, she did not she did not even need a translator because the languages were pretty much the same. So, quick question, Ravina. Uh, yes. So you you did confirm that Bantu is closer to close to Hebrew, right? Absolutely. I honestly do think that the that that is where you find the Israelites. 
Yeah. So are you Bantu? No, I'm Somali. Oh, oh, yeah. Somali. Okay. So so like uh we have uh, a lot of people that uh have issues with uh upper wait, you know, lower Egypt. Yeah, lower Egypt being uh you know uh overrun with ham and that for some reason ham ended up being white. No. Uh, <laughs> what is your comment on that? I think again this I think is very much like I call this uh this is going to sound horrible, but to, to me, this is religious uh, self-deception. Yeah. You know, in the same way that there are a lot of people who believe that the, who believe many things that are weird just because they believe it. There are also some people who honestly do not have the capacity to look at the world or history objectively. They will view, they will look at the, they will look at the, uh, the Egyptians describing themselves as a twin nation of the Somali people. And will still claim to be, and will still claim that the Egyptians were white. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> certain things you just leave them as they are. Yeah. Now yeah, let so me ask you another job. question not, because not I, have to, I have to just say this: it's not our job to convince people. It's our yeah. job to just tell the truth and then leave the rest. Yeah. Now there's different I images on uh, you know the different pyramids and stuff, and some are uh, you know darker skinned looking. Uh, Egyptians and some are lighter skin, some have curly hair. Now, one of the images that I saw looked like the Afar people. What do you think? What is the Afar's relationship to ancient Egypt? Egypt from Egypt, ancient Egypt is is uh, again this the ancient Egyptians are, are two or are, are two groups mainly. One resembled the modern day. One were the people of let's say modern day southern uh, egypt those egyptians resembled more the nilo the nilotic the much darker the much taller uh, africans today uh, who live among the who live uh, along the nile river like, like the people of uganda and things like that yes exactly southern sudan yeah those were the southern egyptians the northern egyptians were much more somali yep. uh, somali phenotype these two over time again I think even um, I forgot his name, but there was a. I would recommend a book called uh, Black Arabia by I think it was Muhammad. Uh, what's his name from the Nation of Islam? I forgot his name, uh, but anyways, the, the book is called Farrakhan? Black. No, 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 not Farrakhan. No, 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 no. Muhammad. Uh, I forgot his name, but anyways, so he described. He he talks about the ancient Egyptians and how ancient Egypt came to be. So his theory is that the north northern Egypt and southern Egypt. Obviously, there were two completely different nations, but that they were also two different people, not just geographically two different nations, but two different people. Southern Egypt resembled more the people who live along the, the Nile River, the Nilotic, the dark, the, tall, the dark, very tall people, whereas the northerners looked more like modern day Somali people. And that these people, as they got closer and closer to each other, and that these actually over the thousand, over the centuries, later mixed and became one nation so that mix the mix between the uh, the the darker africans and the uh, the africans who resemble more the somalians that mix is what later would become ancient egypt or what would later become egypt so that's why you see some that are much much darker while some look more like somali people well but the most of them were a mix so one person in the chat wants to know about the Beja people being Egyptian. Do you know about them? The Bejas of, uh, I forget, it's not Sudan. Was it Chad? I think it was the country of Chad. It's possible. It's not impossible. Again, we, we have to remember that this is 3,000 years ago. Yeah. Today, how many Africans do we have living in Europe? <laughs> exactly. That's true. Yes. Uh, within a century, we see how many black people we have in Europe. So people disperse, people migrate, people change. Three thousand years ago, and today, it's it's not it's not impossible. So, possible so let me ask you this, because we get this from like uh, uh, what we call urban apologists, and they talk about the phenotype and the morphology that happened over time, and how the the Israelites, even though they were could have been, according to them, black, Negro. Okay. They change, and so now they're white, and they're Afghani, and they're yeah. all of these different nations. What would you say to that? 
I think it, again, it has to do with more like self self deception than anything else. Why, why do we have Chinese Muslims? <laughs> well, why do we have uh, Christian Nigerians? You know, these are religions, and people convert. Same thing with the same thing with Judaism. It's it's not that it's really not that different. Yeah, you have white Jews because there are white people who converted to Judaism a thousand years ago. That simple. In the same way that you have Turks who converted to Islam more than a thousand years ago, you also have people who lived in Turkey and that region and Kazaria who took the religion of Judaism a little bit more than a thousand years ago. And those are the people that the, that the so-called Jews descend from. It's very simple. Yeah, there is, no, there is no change of phenotype. They did not change overnight. It's very simple. Thank they you. converted about a thousand years ago, yeah. whereas the original Hebrews... Pretty much like the Arab. The original Hebrews later dispersed. They went into the nations and they lost their culture, the language, they lost many things, their identity. So it's it's actually very simple. But I can understand that some people want to believe this stuff. Yeah. So revisionist, is there a way we can watch your videos? Are you still doing any work? Is your website back up or anything? Honestly, at this moment, I'm working more on I was fed up with with uh, YouTube and all these things. So actually, we actually decided to build our our own social media platform. So that is what I have been doing for the past I don't know two years or so. So that's what I do now. But YouTube and all these things, uh, I don't really I don't I, I don't really plan on uploading things now. Okay, I'm, so I'm so so Rumble is not an option for you then. Rumble is an option, but uh, for me, it's more. Rumble could be an option. We, we will see. We will see. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. So I, I want to thank you for coming on, uh, Revisionist. Thank you for having me. And I apologize because, like I said, I've been sick the whole week. So my yeah, energy. We hope you get well. Off, man. I'm, I'm, I apologize. Okay. And also, uh, can you type uh, in a chat the name of that book you recommended? Oh, absolutely. The book. I can look it up right now. Okay. Just, uh, it's called Black Arabia. Black Arabia, uh, Wesley Muhammad. There you go, Wesley Muhammad. Wesley, yes. Um, yes. All right, I think that's close. I think I spelled it close. All right, so okay. let's see. Black Arabia, Wesley Muhammad. Yes, well, that's, I, that's a very interesting book. Very okay. interesting. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do now, Revisionist, is, uh, you know, unless you want to stay on, we're going to just get final no, no, comments. I really have to go, but thank you so All much right. for inviting me. All right. Thank you for coming on, and uh, we appreciate you giving us your insight. And uh, we look forward to your uh, channel or, or some kind of way we can listen to your stuff again. That'd be great. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right. Thanks. Have a good night. Bye. All right, so uh, we're going to get final comments. I'm, I'm going to start with Don because Don, uh, he was still talking, uh, you know, once we revisioning. So we'll start with Don and we'll work our way around. Uh, so, Don, final comment. Great information, Yacoba. You know, the truth is always going to be the truth. Um, none of the stuff that they're putting out makes sense. The thread has been pulled and the seam is unraveling and it's it's basically a wrap. It's basically a wrap. Um, but they still do have the majority of the world deceived. So it's just a matter of the most high doing his work and uh, bringing, it a, uh, bringing about um, his word because his word completes everything that he sent it forth to do and it doesn't return to him void. So, you know, I can appreciate revisionists, but the reality is Yahushua Mashiach is the king of kings and the Adonai of Adonai. And I, I, I agree. I agree. I'm 100 with you. All right. Thanks, Brother Don. All right. Sister Betty, if I don't comment. You're muted. Yukoba, you yeah. are a good man. Do you hear me? <laughs> Now you a good one. You got the patience of Job. You good. And I, I just thank the most high for you. And and listen, Yahushua Hamashiach, 
he's the king he's the savior i don't care what god you worship because at the end of the day he says all knees and all all knees shall bow and all tongues will shall confess i don't care what you call yourself you coming up under his submission at the end of the day yeah all them other deities and other um gods with a little g um minister yakoba all all that is idol worship yeah. every single bit of it is idol worship i cannot connect myself to idol worshipers we worship one yah one elohim and that's that you can you can call it whatever you want to call it but uh no we'll 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 pass and look, thank you for having the show, Yakoba. I really appreciate it. I enjoyed it today. It made my day. And I, I'm going to send you an email. And to all everybody on the panel, just remember to continue to follow y'all because the delusion is strong. Delusion yeah. is not weak. It Satan, is. listen, he rules this world. Listen, the great falling away is happening right before our very eyes. But listen, we are living in this latter reign latter reign this is the reign that he's raining down for truth and understanding you either going to get wet in the latter rain or you're not you're going to stay in your great delusion do you hear how strong how strong this delusion is them people rush run around a big black rock that fell out of space <laughs> come on now come on now i ain't being disrespectful now because i don't disrespect anybody how you gonna tell me something you run around a big rock y'all go pray around a rock that's not oh, fire stop. that's not fire that's not fire stop please stop uh-uh you <laughs> you cover let me let me let me go but listen you see how strong the delusion is Satan has fooled the world, even the elite. I'm talking about even the one that's been studying. I've got the books from the 1800s. If you still running around a big, big black rock in the desert, I don't know. What, <laughs> listen, please, please leave me alone. You come out to keep putting away the groceries at the preschool on that. Leave me alone. No. And, and Sister In, Betty, huh? ask, ask Arthur, uh, is he going to uh, still uh, videotape his... Uh, his progress you, in the Africa. You got to go follow him, um, Minister Yakoba. Is um Arthur White or yeah. Solo so, um Solo Soul yes. on YouTube because he just put up a video because yeah, I'm gonna tell you about what he yeah, I'm gonna tell you. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna tell you, but yeah, he just put up a video when they landed and everything, how they're walking around. You know, he got his daughter's head tied up in rags, you know, he yeah. But <laughs> okay. it, you know how you know how we are. But the funny thing that. is, I, I subscribed to his channel, but I didn't get a notification. And I didn't get now for you either. Oh, okay. And you know we subscribe. I've been subscribed yeah. since you start talking. Yeah. So why I ain't getting no notification? Me yeah. and Arthur talk about that all the time. I don't know why you ain't getting it because he he uploaded the day after they landed when they went to the Airbnb and then they went to look at you know the property and everything. But yeah, he uploaded already. Okay, I'm gonna check it out. Thanks, Sister Betty. Uh, and I'll be sending you the email. Okay. And again, y'all, continue to look, look for, look for Yahuwah, uh, 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 yeah. Yahuwah, and the son Yahushua Hashiach, not the big black rock. Okay. All right. Thank you, Sister Betty. Thanks for coming. All right. On. All, All right. right. Bye. Bye. All right. I'm, I'm gonna jump to Sister Chantel because she's been there patient and she's over there on the other side. So, Sister Chantel, final comment. I was trying to stay awake. It was good information, <laughs> though. Yeah. Only Auntie Betty. <laughs> she, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm sorry. That was funny. But, um, no, it was good information, though. He he brought some stuff. I, obviously, I don't re re agree with the religion thing because we know what we believe, and he believes what he believes. And at the end of the day, we're going to see who was right in the end, you know. So at the end of the day, we're seeing all this prophecy come true. It's in the scriptures, so I don't know what to say. I'll go with what I can see, what I read, and what I see, you know. But it's funny how we're talking about all of this now and it's like we were all looking towards the motherland and then all of a sudden this erupts like 
like it, it's almost like a group of people who say, "No, look at look at us, look at us. No, no, give us the attention. Oh, oh, we need to do something quick, quick, quick." So you know, it it. I don't believe in coincidences. Uh, just too much is going on, and it's like, it's like I mean, like I'm bored now. You lot are just you do the same, you run the same games all the time. It's boring. Just. Just, just, just hurry up and go into your captivity and leave us alone now. We're just done. We just want to go home. You can have the rest of the world. Leave us with our corner of, of, of the world. And we will just be. We ain't trying to be all up in your business. So stay out of ours. You got the rest of the world. Just leave us alone and just, you know, just, just go somewhere. But no, it was really good. It was, it was good. It was good. <laughs> Auntie Betty's saying, uh, she is, she's such a gem. She says everything. She says the things we all think. So, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you for um, letting me come on. And um, yeah, I hope you have a good, restful, blessed um, Shabbat with the Most High. And for the rest of you, Yasharel, enjoy your day with your father. Okay, and his and your and your big brother, Yahusha Hamashiach, our savior. Okay, anyway, with that, peace. All right, thanks for coming on, Sister Chantel. And I know you're tired, so get some rest. All right, uh, hot sauce, final comment. Yeah, final comments. Um, first, thank you for allowing me on. Uh, it was a good treat to see, uh, to hear from Revisionists. Obviously, we're different, but I mean, like he's Somali, so he's not the people. So, whatever they believe is whatever they believe. For me, it's okay, right? They're not. Then we're we're not the same people, right? But um, I, I will just say that you know, um, hopefully people get this message and understand that America is not the Holy Land, and they kind of wake up uh, out of this delusion, and um, yeah, hopefully we'll be out of here soon. Thank you. And right, uh, be blessed, alone, and uh, yeah, keep me in prayers, and I'll keep y'all in prayers the same. All right, uh, thanks goodbye. for coming on, Hasso. Appreciate it. All right, Jesse, final comment. What's up, my brother? I had to hold my breath for a moment on that one. Uh, <laughs> it was it was really dope information, but I'm gonna say this: I got two things to say. The Most High said, "I've chose you among all the nations; the rest are but spittle." And also Psalms eighty three. So, like, like the brother said, they believe what they believe because they're not the people. And everybody's always trying to get us to believe that we're not the people, but we line up with every scripture in that book, the old and the new. And I'll park it right there. Peace and blessings, everybody. All right. Thanks, Brother Jesse. Brother Eric, final comment. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Brother Yakoba, thanks again for having me. I, I think you're one of the, I mean, you're one of my favorite people. I, 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 I'm telling you, uh, you're just real. I like realness, you know. In terms of your research, you know, you, you, you don't care what people think. You remind me a lot of myself. I don't, um, you know. Anyway, I'm gonna, whenever I come on here, I'm always excited. So I'm going to calm myself, right? And I'm going to tell y'all, let's just be good obedient children yeah when 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 my dad used to come home from work he used to always ask me you've been behaving yourself and i and i, I say sure and i but the whole time i cutting up and i say mommy don't tell daddy don't tell daddy when he comes he said you, you better behave yourself so you ran to the brat back backyard brother i ran to the back room and hid <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but what I want to say is let's just be good children for our father. He gave us Torah. He gave us the Tanakh, not the Talmud. That's the mother people book. You understand? Let them people have they, they God or whoever you want to call them. We don't serve the same Elohim. Leave them people alone. Let them do their thing. We're going to serve our God and we're going to serve him with honor and respect. And we're going to do all things decently and in order. And we're going to love each other. That's the key to getting out of this place. That's it. That's it. it on. All right. Thank you, Brother Eric, for coming on. Brother God, final comment. 
All right. Um, I know people have some like, you know, trepidation about the brother revisionist. Um, as soon as I heard him, I kind of understood what was going on. So I kept my mouth shut. Um, Yahusha is the Messiah. We all know this. So, I mean, I guess the people are concerned that, you know, there's new believers on, or people coming in, but we all claim Yahusha HaMashiach as the Messiah. He wasn't just some messenger from the Most High. He was the Most High in human flesh, came down. Of course, he died and took on the sins of the world. And through him, we are restored. And he's the King of Yasharel. And, you know, you, you, you're always saying, spit out. No, I, I, I was about to mess it up. Eat the meat, spit out the bones, family. I, I mean, then again, I, I, should be, I shouldn't even be talking because maybe if it was like two or three years ago, I probably would have blacked out on him. But now I'm just, you know, staying calm and, you know, stoic. I'm not letting, you know, what people believe, you know, sway we too much or one way or the other. Unless it gets physical or something like that, there's no reason for us to really honestly get so, um, well, I'm not going to tell people how to feel, but at this point, let the scriptures um, prove who we are pretty soon. I mean, you know, I, I don't believe that these people don't know who we are. And, you know, it's just like, uh, it's like if we want to keep on taking the gaslighting from them, um, it is what it is, you know. It, but at the same time, he had some great information. Um, I didn't agree with all of it. But I'm learning that you can't really throw away the baby with the bathwater. Um, you know, I mean, if someone's an atheist and they tell you two plus two is four, you're going to say, no, I don't believe you because you're an atheist. No. But, you know, I digress. And um, I thank you for having me on here. I hope everyone has a blessed Shabbat. And I mean, more than more than um, anything, I'm just praying for everyone because these times are kind of uh, tenuous and what's going on in that same land that we're all talking about is um, very, you know, I'm not going to say concerning, but we should be, uh, you know, looking for our redemption and, you know, the second exodus. We don't have to, like, you know, go to Christians and Arabs and say, you know what, we're the people, you know, it's just like, it's kind of like you're just always going to convict them of their wrongdoing and they're never going to come in and admit it. That's why the Most High has to destroy them and destroy their pride. You know, that's what I've, I've, I've already like made peace with that. Like they're never going to, going to, you know, say anything until they die or on their own deathbed or until they're severely punished. So let his will be done. And, um, thank you, brother. Yacob. All right. Thank you, brother. Gore. So I want to thank the panel for everybody who came on and, uh, giving their input and insight. Um, also I want to Brit, I want to thank brother, uh, revisionist for coming on and giving his input of course we disagree because i believe yeshua is the messiah i believe he's the only way to the father i believe he's god in human flesh uh but here's the thing you know some some of y'all say you know you but you're very patient you're very nice i've y'all y'all see me go off right i have i have my moments but uh the thing i like about revisionists is that He's a truth seeker. He's honest in terms of his pursuit. Now, the way I look at it, you know, the scripture says that when we went into captivity, we would, uh, you know, serve wood and stone. And so some of our people are in Islam and some of our people are in Christianity. And remember when we were in Christianity, we thought we were right. We thought we had the answer right now. Yes. Jesus, whose real name is Yeshua, is God in human flesh. He is the Messiah. He is the only Savior. We had that right. But they told us there's no more law, that the law is done away with. We don't have to do that anymore. And so the more we study, the more we research, we found out some new stuff. We found out that the law was not destroyed. We found out that we do have to obey the laws, not for salvation for being obedient sons and daughters and as a light unto our path so we can have direction so when i see people still in islam and people still in christianity we, you know we were stuck there we were in christianity for the longest and some of our people still in islam and uh, of course uh you know brother revisionist he says he's a uh, somali 
So he's not an Israelite, but I guarantee you this, when these prophecies unfold and we go back home, he'll be the first one to be a believer in Yeshua. I guarantee you that. When we hop in on those ships and those boats and those planes and, you know, all these Negroes start getting off the land and back in Israel, back in Africa, and everybody see that Israel went into captivity for their sins. And guess what? They return home according to what's written in the Old Testament. I guarantee you they're going to believe in Yeshua then. And this whole new world order thing that's breaking out and the forming of the 10 nation confederacy. I bet you they're going to believe in Yeshua then. It's just a matter of time. Everybody ain't at the same pace, at the same place. But I guarantee you this. Those who seek truth know truth when they see it. See, those who seek truth know truth when they see it. They may not be where we at. But here's the thing. Remember, Israel is supposed to be a testimony. We are supposed to be a testimony to the world that Yeshua is God. He is Savior. He is the Messiah, not just a prophet. He is the most high who is the visible image of the invisible God. We are a testimony. The Bible says that they're going to know about Yah because they're going to know that Israel went into captivity for their sins and that our Elohim forgave us of our sins and restored us as a people back in the land. Not only that, but made us the head and not the tail. Who not going to believe the scriptures then? Who's not going to believe that Yeshua is Elohim then? You going to see all these prophecies come in the past and the restoration of a people who were dead, who lost their identity, who lost their heritage, who had their identity stolen? Guess how many people are going to believe then? Surely Yeshua must be Elohim because he prophesied all these things were going to happen in it and the wars and the rumors of wars and the earthquakes and the pessimists in diverse nations and that people are going to know that Yahuwah is Elohim because he, he wrote it down beforehand and said what was going to happen and it came to pass. So I guarantee you, people who may not necessarily accept the Messiah right now, but are truth seekers are going to end up accepting him. See, I believe people who have a, a heart for Yah, who truly wants to know Yah, will know him. They're going to come to know him through the sun. Watch. Just watch. All these prophecies that come to pass. See, that, that's the other thing, too. And I ask for those who, who you may be on a, on a fence. You may be on the fence about who Yeshua is, that he is the most high Yah in human flesh. He's the visible image of the invisible God because Father Yah is a spirit. So he came down here to die for his people. Understand this. When you see all these things happening, you're going to know for a fact, not only that we the people, because people are going to attach themselves to us and say, surely we have inherited lies and things where there is no profit. Right? You're going to see all of this. You're going to know we're the people, and you're going to know Yeshua is our God. You're going to know Yeshua is our Elohim, that Yeshua is our King, that the Father gave everything to him to judge everything and everyone. And at the end of all of this, and when everything is put to, to rest and even death, he's going to hand it all over to the Father. Peace and blessings, Israel. Your captivity is ending. I love this show. This was great. I was glad Revisionists came on. I'm glad we had the panel conversation. I enjoyed it very much. And uh, look at what's happening. I mean, you know, just just look at the signs and that's happening on this planet. I don't know how much time we got left here. I tell you one thing, though. I'm looking forward to seeing my family on the continent. Peace and blessings, Israel. Your captivity is ending. Support the Dry Bones Project. We going home, in my opinion, very soon. I don't see how it lasts any longer. I'm like, you know, they're about to press that little red button, you know, where things go boom, boom, boom. And, uh... Babylon going to be destroyed. I'm just saying that's what it looks like to me. That's what the scripture says. And guess what? Like I said, you're going to have a lot of people come into the faith, those who make it past the sword. Mm -hmm.